How Tall, How Short, How Far Away by David A. Adler, illustrated by Nancy Tobin. How tall are you? How long is your block? How far away is your school? The only way to answer these questions is by measuring. People have been measuring things for thousands of years. In ancient Egypt, fingers, hands and arms were used as measuring tools. The width of one finger was a digit and the width of four fingers was a palm. Open your hand, stretch out your fingers. The distance from the tip of your thumb to the end of your little finger was a span. Now bend your arm. The distance from your elbow to the tip of your middle finger was a cubit. Try figuring out your height using the units of measure of ancient Egypt. Stand straight with your back against a wall. Have an adult mark your height with a very light pencil mark. How many cubits tall are you? Lie down on the floor. Place your elbow on the floor next to the wall. Bend it and reach up. Make a light pencil mark where the tip of your middle finger touches the wall. That's one cubit. Now get up and put your elbow at the one cubit mark. Reach up. Make a light pencil mark where the tip of your middle finger touches the wall. That's two cubits. Keep measuring cubits. Your height may not be an exact number of cubits. If it isn't, use the other measures of ancient Egypt too. From the cubit mark just beneath your height mark, begin measuring spans, palms and digits. I'm three cubits, one span, two palms and two digits tall. How tall are you? Now ask a friend to measure your height in cubits, spans, palms and digits. If her arm is shorter than yours, her measure will be different from yours. Try measuring the length of your block. Take your friend and an adult to one end of your block. Count your steps as you walk to the other end. Every two steps is a pace. A measure used in ancient Rome. You, your friend and the adult walking with you may each get a different answer. That's because the length of your steps are different. If you were to measure a greater distance, perhaps the distance from your house to your school, you might measure it in miles. In ancient Rome, one mile was measured by counting 1,000 paces. If everyone used her own arm to measure, we wouldn't know the exact size of anything. If everyone used her own steps to measure paces and miles, we wouldn't know the exact distance to any place. In the past, people often used one man's cubic, or step, as a standard. That man was usually the people's leader or king. Of course, kings would not travel from house to house to measure things, so standard measuring sticks were made. Here they are. The customary system is based on Roman measures. 1 inch is about the width of a thumb, 12 inches are 1 foot, 3 feet are 1 yard, 5,280 feet are 1 mile. The metric system was first proposed over 300 years ago by Father Gabriel Mouton, a French priest. The original meter was not the length of someone's arm or step, it was figured out as 1 10 millionth of the distance from the North Pole to the equator. All metric measures of length and distance are based on the meter and the number 10. A meter is a little more than 39 inches. The meter is the basic unit of measure. 10 meters are one decameter. 100 meters are one hectometer. 1000 meters are one kilometer. There are units smaller than a meter too. One tenth of a metre is a decimeter, one one hundredth of a metre is a centimetre, and one one thousandth of a metre is a millimetre. Now open your refrigerator. What units of measure would you use in the customary system to measure the length of a celery stick? 
which units in the metric system? Which units would you use to measure the length of your kitchen? Which units would you use to measure the distance from your house to the library? In science class, you would use the small units to measure the celery stick. Inches or centimeters? You would use larger units to measure the kitchen, feet, yards or meters. And you would use even larger units to measure the distance to the library, miles or kilometers. The customary and metric systems are just two different ways of measuring things in science class. We'll use the metric system. Go into a car and look at the speedometer. It probably measures speed in both miles per hour and kilometers per hour. The speedometer shows you that 25 miles per hour is about the same as 40 kilometers per hour. The odometer shows how far the car has traveled. When you go for a ride, look at the signs you see on the highway. In many places, distances are given in both miles and kilometers. And check the odometer before you begin a ride. And when you're done, see how far you've traveled. Inches and centimeters, feet, yards and meters. Miles and kilometers are just different ways of measuring the same length and distance. In science class, the metric system rules. People have been measuring things for thousands of years. Now with your ruler and the odometer in your car, you can too. The end.